بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد لمحمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الهداة المهديين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al Fakhr al Razi was a very notable scholar that had wrote a very powerful tafsir of the Quran. He is considered amongst the greatest ulama of the Sunni school of thought, Al Fakhr al Razi. In his book of Al Tafsir, Al-Fakhr al-Razi narrates an incident that happened during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He narrates the hadith from Abu Dharr al-Ghafari, the famous companion. He says that Abu Dharr states that one day we were in the mosque of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Me and a few of the other companions of Rasulullah. And then all of a sudden, a beggar comes in. Someone comes and he starts to ask the companions for help. Every companion he would go to, they would not help him. Either because they did not have anything to give or maybe they just did not want to help that faqir. So he asked and asked and asked until he lost hope. Once he lost hope, Abu Dhar says, this individual, this poor man raised his hands to Allah. And he said, Ya Allah, I came to the masjid of your prophet, of your messenger. He complained to Allah, asking for some help, but no one helped me. If I will not find help in the mosque of the prophet, where should I go? He said that with a broken heart. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, Abu Dhar says, overheard the dua of that man and how he was complaining to Allah. So Amir al muminin was in the state of salah, he was praying. Imam Ali alayhi salam heard the dua of this distressed individual who was complaining to Allah that no one helped him in the masjid of Rasulullah. Imam Ali is in the state of ruku'. He can't wait until he finishes to help that man because he's about to leave. So while the Imam is in the state of ruku', he extends his hand and he was wearing a ring and he extends it to the poor man telling him, take it. While he's in the state of ruku', that poor man, he notices the hand of Imam Ali, he understands that Imam Ali is giving him this gift, this sadaqah. He comes and takes the ring from the holy blessed finger of Imam Ali and he leaves. Abu Dhar says, Rasulullah, was watching all of this. We've heard the story, but maybe these other parts of the story we have not heard before. Al-Fakhr al-Razi, a Sunni scholar, mentions this in his book. Abu Dhar says, Rasulullah was watching all of this, how Imam Ali gave him his ring while he was in Rukur. He said, as soon as the Prophet saw that, he raised his hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah. And he said, Ya Allah, when you sent Musa to Fir'aun, Musa made a dua, he made a request from you. He said, Rabbi shrah li sadri, wa yassir li amri, wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli, waj'al li waziran min ahli Harun akhi, ishdud bihi azri, wa ashrikhu fi amri. When Allah requested Musa to go to Fir'aun, Musa said, Ya Allah, make me strong, give me courage, take away the impediment from my speech, and I want you to appoint a deputy to help me, someone who is my deputy, to assist me, to aid me. And Musa, he even told Allah who he wants to be his assistant and deputy. Harun Akhi, my brother Harun. So please make him my assistant, my deputy, my Khalifa, so that I go to Fir'aun with him. And then the Prophet said, you answered the dua, the request of Musa. You said in the next verses, 
Allah said, we will support you with your brother Harun. Thus when Musa went to Fir'aun, he went with his brother Harun. The Prophet, our Prophet Muhammad sallu alayhi bi ala aswatikum. He, he tells Allah the story. And then he tells him, Ya Allah and I, Muhammad, also have a request. I also ask you, Shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri, waj'al li waziran min ahli aliyan ishtud bihi dhahri. I ask you, just like Musa asked you to appoint a deputy to assist him and support him, I ask you to appoint Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as my deputy to assist me and aid me. Abu Dhar says, as soon as Rasulullah made that dua, Jibra'il came down from the heavens upon Rasulullah. And he recited a verse from the Quran. He brought down a verse from the Quran. Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 55. Chapter 5, verse 55. It's a verse that you should all have memorized. One of the most beautiful and important verses in the Quran that proves the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Jibra'il comes down to Rasulullah and he tells him this verse, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ Allah says in this verse, know that you have only three guardians. You have only three individuals that have authority over you in religion. Three imams to follow. Number one is Allah. Allah is our guardian, of course. When He orders us, commands us, we have to follow. Number two, the Quran, Rasulullah. He is our guardian, He is our leader. And that's why the Quran says, He has more authority over us than we do over ourselves. And number three, this is what's important. And number three, And the third, the third of your guardians are the ones, the believers that pray. And they give zakat while they are in the state of Ruku' while they are bowing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah brings down a verse in virtue of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that act that he gave the khatam, Allah records it in the Holy Quran. And he proves that Imam Ali is the wali of all the Muslims, meaning the leader and the guardian. And thus this verse is called Ayatul Wilaya. It proves that Imam Ali alayhi salam is the imam. Many people, they ask, why isn't Imam Ali mentioned in the Qur'an? This is incorrect. Who told you Imam Ali is not mentioned in the Qur'an? He's mentioned in this verse. The word Ali is not mentioned, but Allah mentions him. He refers to him because the Mufassireen of the Qur'an, and it is widely transmitted by the books of Hadith, that this verse was revealed when Imam Ali gave the Sadaqah during Rukur. Allah is saying, your Wali, your Imam is the person that gives Sadaqah that gives zakat while he's in the state of rukur. No one besides Imam Ali did that. History has not recorded that. Have you ever seen anyone, Asan, in your lifetime that gives sadaqah, zakat, while he's doing rukur? This verse is only for Ali ibn Abi Talib. It can only apply to Ali. There's no other person that it can apply to. So Allah speaks about Imam Ali alayhi salam in this verse. And not only that, but Allah is telling us that he is your what? He's your wali, which means your imam. Now, there's a point that sometimes is raised against this argument. The word wali itself, the word wali has more than one meaning. And Al-Fakhr al-Razi himself, when he mentions the story, he says the Shia, they claim that this verse proves Imam Ali is the Khalifa of Rasulullah. What's his refutation to this claim? He says, the Qur'an says, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمْ Allah and the Prophet and the one who gives sadaqah and ruku' they are all your wali. He says that wali has more, more than one meaning. One meaning of wali is imam, your leader. But there's another meaning to wali. The other meaning to wali is your friend. Your friend, uh, your supporter. This is what? This is also wali. That's why the Qur'an says, Al-Mu'minuna wal-Mu'minat, ba'dhuhum awliya'u ba'd, the believers, they are all awliya of each other. I am your wali and you're my wali, meaning we are friends.
for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So wali has more than one meaning. The Shia, they say that in this verse, what is meant by wali is imam, leader, authority, not friend. He says this entire argument relies on one word. If the Shia can prove this, then they can prove wali. In this verse means imam, it does not mean friend. It all relies on the word innama. The verse begins with innama waliyukumullah. He says that the word innama in the Arabic language, there is a disagreement on what it means. Some ulama of the Arabic language say that innama means only. Adatu hasrin. It means only. So the verse would mean you only have three walis. Allah, the Prophet, and the person that gave zakat while he was in ruku'. He says, but there are other ulama of the Arabic language who say, no, innama is not adatu hasrin. It does not mean only. It means verily or especially. So these are especially your walis, but there could be other walis. He says the entire argument of the Shia rests on the word innama, meaning only. Because if it means only, then what is Allah saying? Allah is saying you only have three walis. Allah, the Prophet and the person who gave zakat while he was in ruku, Imam Ali. That means only these people. Now if wali met friend, why only these are your friends? There's so many other sahaba, they are all awliya, correct? So why is Allah saying only these three? That means it cannot be, if innama means only, then wali cannot mean friend. It has to mean imam because Allah and the Prophet and a third person, they share one thing. And only these three have that thing. And that is what? The wilaya. That is the imama. That is the leadership. So is that clear? So if innama means only, then it has to, uh, it has to mean imam. But if it means verily, or if it means especially, then no. Imam Ali is a wali, everyone else is a wali too. Every other believer is also wali. Because innama does not mean what? Does not mean only. And then Al-Fakhr al-Razi replies. He says the problem with the argument of the Shia is that innama does not mean only. Does not mean only. So yes, even though, even if we say this verse is speaking about Imam Ali, so what? Allah is saying, Allah is your friend, Muhammad is your friend, and Ali is your friend. Big deal. All the other Sahaba are friends of the believers. Why? Because innama does not mean only. Now what's the problem with this, brothers and sisters? What's the problem with his argument? The problem with his argument is, there are many verses in the Qur'an, other verses, where Allah uses the word innama. They don't have anything to do with Imam Ali. Many verses in the Qur'an, Allah uses the word innama. Every other verse that Allah uses the word innama, Al-Fakhr al-Razi says innama here means what? Only. And I found at least eight verses in the Qur'an where Allah says innama and then He says Allah. Fakhr al-Razi comes and says innama in Arabic means only. And then He speaks for two pages proving His point that innama means only. But when it comes to Ali ibn Abi Talib, he forgets what he said in those other verses. He says, innama does not mean only. Let me give you an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one verse, innama harrama alaykum al maytata wa dam wa lahma al khanzir wa ma uhilla li ghayrullah. Allah says, I have forbidden four things. Number one is what? Al mayta. Mayta is what? Any animal that is not slaughtered in the halal way. That's why you can't go to Walmart and Costco and to an American store and buy meat because this is meita. It was not slaughtered in the Islamic way. So meita is haram. Number two, dam, blood is haram. Number two, three, pork. Pork is haram. And number four, ma'uhilla li ghayrillah. Anything that was slaughtered for other than Allah. So if there was a sheep that was killed for an idol, for example, you cannot eat that. It's haram. Al-Fakhr al-Razi, he says, there is a discussion between the ulama. Is Allah saying, only these four are haram? Or no, he's just mentioning four things. He says it all relies on the word innama. If innama means only, then Allah is saying only these are haram. That means everything else is halal. Is that clear? But if innama does not mean only, it means especially or verily, then there could be other haram things. 
Then he says that my opinion, that innama means only. And for two or three pages, he proves that through so many arguments, that innama means only. But then when he comes to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, and the ayah of Wulaya, chapter 5, verse 55, he says innama does not mean only. Why? Just because he knows that if innama means only, that would mean that Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam is the Khalifa of Rasulullah. That's why, brothers and sisters, this is one of the most powerful verses. Someone asks you, why do you follow Ali ibn Abi Talib? What is your proof that he is the Khalifa and the Imam after Rasulullah? Recite for them chapter 5, verse 55. Innama waliyukum Allah. Innama, remember, means what? Only. Three guardians we have, three walis we have. Number one, Allah. Number two, Rasulullah. And number three, the one that gives zakat in his salah. And according to historians and narrators, it was only Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam that gave sadaqah zakat while he was in the state of Rukur. And this verse, brothers and sisters, chapter 5, verse 55, it was revealed on the 24th day of the Hajjah. Today is either the 20, 21st day, so only a few days away. So these are the days that we remember Imam Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu was salam. And the 24th day of the Hajjah, another verse was also revealed in another year. And that is Ayatul Mubahala, when Rasulullah took Imam Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein to the Christians of Najran. To perform the mubahala, that is another topic that needs its own lecture. I'm sure tomorrow in Khutbat al Jum'ah you'll hear more about it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst the followers of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib in this life. We ask Him to make us amongst those that hold on to the wilaya at Tamasuk, bi wilayat Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. We ask Him to make us amongst the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib to grant us his ziyara in Najaf, insha'Allah, in this life. And in the akhira, the shafa'a of Ali ibn Abi Talib, insha'Allah. Hada wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahireen.